When a conservative talks common sense on a college campus, anything can happen. F you, you f***ing fascist! Shit! Shit! Things didn't go as planned inside UMKC's Royal Hall. <laughs> Often it's the most mundane topics that cause the most consternation. Socialism is bad. Babies are people. Men aren't women. It's this last topic that got me in trouble most recently at Washburn University. A Washburn University student organization is criticizing the school's president for a school-wide email condemning an upcoming guest speaker. Before I ever even spoke, the president of the university, Jerry Farley, the man who had personally signed my speaker contract inviting me to campus, defamed and condemned me in an email to the entire university for allegedly spreading hate and misinformation. Left-wing campus activists from surrounding campuses organized a protest against me. We cannot be a race. I'm so incredibly proud of our community for coming together so quickly to show support for the transgender community during our time of need. They called me a threat and a danger, little old me, for having the audacity to say that boys and girls are different and for daring to question transgenderism. As it turned out, on Trans Visibility Day. A happy coincidence, or maybe a little bit of providence for my speech. So my producer showed up to the protest to see what all the fuss was about. And then something happened that we didn't expect. So we're meeting for the first time in person. Are you gonna be sticking around tonight for the speaker? Uh, I'm not gonna go watch him. <laughs> Would you be interested in hearing what he has to say? I've, I've heard what he has to say. I'm good. Is there anything that Michael Knowles has said in the past that uh, you are on the other side of and disagree with that sh you maybe would want to hope that someone addresses in the speech tonight and asks him that question? Uh, he has a fundamental dis uh, misunderstanding of gender, of sexuality, of what any of it means. And quite fake. Thank you. And quite frankly, my child <laughs> says gender is fake and right. my child is correct. He has a fundamental misunderstanding of it, and he needs to go educate himself. I'd be happy to help him. You know, I feel like that that's my job as a, as a trans ally. Uh, I'm part of the LGBTQ community myself. I feel like it's my job to help him and not my trans brothers and sisters' job to help him. Um, and he just, he has a fundamental dis misunderstanding of the way that things work. Three out of my four children actually Yes, three out of my four children are trans. Um, uh, they're all, all part of the sure LGBT. Four out of four of them. Four out of four? Yeah, because Finn. Oh, Finn. Yeah. Uh, are trans, they are part of the LGBTQ community. I love them, I support them. Why would I do anything different as a parent? And if you can't, as a parent, say you love and support your children and accept them for who they are, give them to somebody else. There's someone out there who will. It seems like the campus is pretty welcoming. Is that what you guys have experienced on campus as far as like conversations with teachers, students, that sort of thing, with your beliefs? Yeah, I would say so for the most part, yeah. Definitely for me too. So if you, if you hypothetically said like, hey, I, I believe that men are women and that there's, there's such thing as biological sex, would you feel comfortable saying that in a classroom or, or, a campus on, or anywhere on campus? Yeah. I'd say so. Well, I guess when you're lying back too, right? Yeah, right. <laughs> a little big tough. Yeah. Yeah. I would say it, but I, I wouldn't necessarily say I would always feel comfortable saying that. Because um, obviously people do have a lot of different beliefs, and I, I know of, of some people that would be upset, just like either side would be. Can you give me a quick breakdown of the flags here and what they are? Um, this one is the standard gay LGBT pride flag. Uh, that one around the shorter person's shoulders that's not under the umbrella is a modified pride flag that includes black and brown people as well as the trans pride flag colors. Their headband is the non-binary pride flag. Uh, the one on that poster, the blue, pink, and white is the trans pride flag. The lesbian pride flag, I see the bi pride flag in there as well as the standard LGBT general gay pride flag and they're also carrying the pansexual pride flag the you see the yellow pink and blue yeah, yeah. that's pansexual my producer approached the event organizers themselves i had actually already interacted with one of them a student named sierra when she had tweeted out the posters 
for the protest that she had organized against me. Was there anything that you may disagree with Michael on or stance that he's taken, the things he said, that you said you may have, like, you know some books that he's read, um, is there anything that specifically you feel like you're on the other side of? Um, um, yes, and that's okay. Yeah, I'd say so. Definitely what uh, the rhetoric he's trying to uh, talk about tonight, I definitely disagree with. You know what he's talking about today? Um, I believe what he posted on his Instagram was the end of transgenderism for all. Um, I do just want to say, I know you're probably going to ask this or something like it, um, we as a group who work to put this together do not want conservatives or right-wing speakers to not be on campus. We want them to be on campus just the same as um, liberal or left-wing students have their events. Um, mainly our issue is when it comes to safety or threats of um, violence. Yeah. Um, which I think you probably saw on Twitter, um, definitely I, certain ideologies do strike people to engage in violence, and that was just one of our concerns, but we're more than happy that he's going to be here. Um, mm -hmm. We're really just worried about the ideas that may be pushed. Yeah. I've been uh, approached by my fellow peers that they feel unsafe being here with that uh, narrative being on campus, and so, um, yeah, it's just that sort of thing that I disagree with. If he would have talked about anything else that wasn't considered hateful speech I wouldn't disagree with him being here or the, uh, whatever he wanted to speak about because I'm a fan of the First Amendment go for it but yeah. once you directly target somebody and especially the people that I love that's when I have a problem. So in theory the students have no problem with conservatives speaking on campus but then when you get to actual conservatives saying actual conservative things then they object to it as hate speech or dangerous or violent they're all for the First Amendment in the abstract, but when it comes to a conservative like me speaking in practice, they're against it. The leftist students always have a lot to say when they're protesting or trying to interrupt the event, but they rarely have the guts to come up and ask a question or refute some point in my speech. At this speech, however, the organizer of the protest against me, Sierra, actually showed up to hear the speech and even agreed to sit down privately afterward for an impromptu conversation. Hi. <laughs> so we're meeting for the first time in person. Yes. But we met previously on Twitter. Yes. When you organized mm -hmm. a protest of, of me and kind of of the, the event general. Yeah, yeah, the topic mostly, but yeah. <laughs> so your name? My name is Sierra Dieter. Sierra, first of yes. all, thank you for uh, coming, for coming to the talk. Yeah. Thank you for agreeing to sit down. I suspect you... Uh, don't agree with me? Uh, yeah, not entirely, no. Anything. Yeah, not maybe almost anything, just about what you spoke about today, yeah. Did, did I convince you? No, no. unfortunately. I think, um, I was talking with somebody outside, I think we're on the both either ends of the coin. Um, I think you truly do love people and you truly have the best intentions for people. Just the way you go about it is differently. You know, not bad, not, you know, equal, whatever. And I'm on the other end where I just, I'm like, I, in a different way, I love people and I want to respect people and I want to be there for them, you know, just in a different way. <laughs> that's, very, that's very kind and charitable mm -hmm. of you to say yeah. that. Did you, were you always more progressive and sort of left-wing in your views? Yes, yeah, especially when I started getting, in, started getting into politics, yeah, it's definitely been more left-wing, yeah. What got you into politics? Um, the 2016 election, <laughs> yeah, when I was in high school. Did that to a lot of people? Yes. <laughs> so what do you study here? Uh, I study political science and Spanish, those are my majors. Okay, mm -hmm. and so you were always on the left. Mm -hmm. Do you have any kind of personal connection to this issue, a family member or a friend? Or? I have a lot of friends actually on campus and outside of campus who uh, identify as transgender, who um, had, you know, with the, you know, end of transgender transgenderism madness, um, felt directly unsafe and felt like their protection on campus was uh, targeted. So they, that's what made, kind of fueled my fire. They didn't think that I was going to, little old me, that I was going to attack. No, but uh, words speak just as loudly as uh, actions. So, you know, this sort of rhetoric and this narrative was directly targeting them and they felt unsafe, um, you know, on Do, campus. And There is a difference, isn't there, between, you know, someone saying something that might offend you greatly mm -hmm. or might even hurt you emotionally mm -hmm. right. and someone actually, uh, you know, physically harming you. Yeah, I would definitely say there's a difference between me saying an insult to your face or punching you. Yeah, there's yeah. definitely an actual difference there. So then is but, it... Is it productive to use the same words of sort of I'm unsafe or I'm you know, I think danger. if you feel unsafe by anything that makes you feel unsafe using that word is fine. 
I, but I guess that's the word at issue, right? I could be the, the president of this university, Jerry mm-hmm. Farrell, who, who invited me to come here and sign the contract, personally sure. inviting me on this day. I, I didn't know the day had any significance to any sort of sexual thing. Sure. He then condemned me and said I'm a terrible person and a horrible, hateful bigot. He probably hasn't even Googled me, but he just felt impelled to do that. Sure. That hurt my feelings. Mm-hmm. But I, it didn't make me feel unsafe. It made mm-hmm. me feel unwanted, right. not affirmed, or mm-hmm. whatever the language is. But I didn't feel unsafe. Um, I guess... Let me say, so when you say the words putting an end to transgenderism or try, like pushing people like you did to the audience today to be proactively trying to stop, you know, a this person idea. from having, yeah, an identity, you yeah. know, your, your physical actions and your verbal, and like your physical actions or your verbal actions might incite somebody to do something very verbally or very physically to somebody else. Well, those, and there's a distinction that you just granted me. Right. You say very verbally mm-hmm. or very physically, and I, I think it's quite clear from my speech. Yeah. I do want people to take verbal and political action, right? You vote, you mm-hmm. engage in Which the government. Which can be, in turn, if somebody were to take actual action, be very harmful to somebody. Because what do you mean by actual action? I mean, for, for instance, uh, what I was proposing mm-hmm. was that we stop indulging transgenderism. That, sure. it, that it's just, not, it's not that people who think they're transgender do not exist or do not deserve to be loved and cared for and enjoy all the rights that everyone has. Mm-hmm. But that the idea just isn't true. That, mm-hmm. that uh, you know, if a person who looks like a man, if I came mm-hmm. out and I said I'm a woman, even if I really believed it, even sure. if I really that it just, it just wouldn't be true, and therefore it's not good to affirm someone in something that is mm-hmm. not true. Mm-hmm. That, that was my argument. And so right. I, my argument is that it doesn't help anybody, most especially the people who identify this way. It doesn't help them to indulge in this. I'm thinking of that young woman mm-hmm. who stood up and said, I, was, I felt transgender, mm-hmm. I was doing binding my breasts and things. Sure. And, uh, but I actually was autistic, and I was then I was diagnosed as autistic, and so. Mm-hmm. It, 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 does, does that not carry any water? Um, I guess it's um, like your words and like what you're trying to you know give people and like to be proactively about it. I wanted to say like that still in turn can cause somebody to do something physical to somebody else, which. You mean? Do you mean if they? Misinterpreted something I said. Sure, but sure. That, but you can't blame me for that. I, I'm not blaming you. That's the thing. The entire. You, and you, you couldn't blame the, the people in the audience for that. You couldn't blame the university for that. It, it's definitely the person, you know. But yeah. it's still that sort of like I tie could, into like if so, like. Charles Charles Manson thought that the Beatles were calling him to start a race war with sure. the song Helter Skelter. I don't blame Paul McCartney for the Manson killings. Mm-hmm. They would be absurd to do that. Wouldn't yeah. the same principle hold true here? I don't know if I agree. Yeah, it's like, you know, Donald Trump being like, we're going to, you know, show him what we got. You know, I, he didn't verbally say, let's storm the Capitol. But in turn, people stormed the Capitol. Because if you have a voice and they're going to listen and people feel so strongly about the opinion that you're talking about, they might go out of their way to be... But in, I think that's an imprecise analogy, even though you grant that Trump didn't directly call anyone to violence, but, but even beyond that, it seems imprecise to me because what I am saying is that the way to love someone and to treat someone with respect is to tell them the truth, and that right now the transgender ideology is harming people, the people who are in the thrall of it, and everyone else who's mm-hmm. now being forced to lie, to the girls who have to share the bathroom with a man, to the the swimming girls who had to lose their trophy to, uh, to William Thomas. And so I'm saying they're, they're all being harmed by it. We need to go all the way in explaining transgenderism is not real and we need to stop the mm-hmm. legal toleration of it, the cultural encouragement of it, and that will help everybody involved. Does that, it, isn't that a little different than you know, storming the Capitol or something? In a, per se, yeah, until somebody takes your words and, you know, runs with them and decides to, you know, eradicate, you know, a transgender person. Or, how, how you could, know. I don't even know how that could happen. I do understand how someone could hear Donald Trump say, we're going to go show those lawmakers what we mm-hmm. mean. Now, he, did, he said be peaceful, right. but I could see how someone could misinterpret that to go and... So you but, don't see somebody misinterpreting your words as, like, 
we should end this group of people. This. But I didn't say. No, no. I well, don't, not, not. You're saying they would be misinterpreting. Me. Right. Exactly. In misinterpreting you, and then going out of their way in, you know, doing an action that causes somebody harm. No, Everything I, can be interpreted, and then action afterwards can still be tied down to the line of whoever they're going to say, you know, made me do it. I listened to this person. Whatever, whatnot. I, I suppose anything's possible, except mm-hmm. the, what I would point out is I give a lot of these talks. Mm-hmm. Nobody has done it, understandable. We're talking to thousands and thousands Mm -hmm. of people, and so I understand how in this hypothetical, you were describing, well, these people could be incited to some Mm -hmm. violence or something. Does the fact that nothing like that has ever happened, does the fact that you've met a lot of these people tonight, I presumably you talked to some of them, Mm -hmm. does that change your view of of the people, you know, the conservatives Mm -hmm. who make people feel unsafe? or the likelihood that something like that would take place? Or does it not change? Is your, does your view on that remain unchanged? Um, I think with anything, if the words hold so much truth to a person, something can happen. It's not conservatives that make people feel unsafe. It's the, the narrative that is, you know. That conservatives are articulated? I wouldn't say all conservatives, but, but that I'm like. Articulated. Yeah. I'm the one. It's not the conservatives, it's just me. I wouldn't say, I mean, there's definitely a lot of other people who, you know, say the same as you. Is there any way that I could have given this speech or that conservatives like me could articulate the point of view that I'm articulating in a way that would, namely that men are not women and women are not men and we should, we should stop um, indulging the transgenderism idea. Is there any way that you think that one could articulate that view that would not make others feel unsafe, as you're saying? Personally, I don't think you should indulge into these people's lives of, you know, them identifying as transgender. Um, but uh, but they're, they're certainly uh, infringing on the things that I can do and say, right? In the classroom, one needs to now respect people's pronouns, mm-hmm. right? That, so that would be an, an onus on me. The girls who now have to change in a locker room with men who have male anatomy, Certainly, they are infringing on their lives and their rights. So why is this only a one-way street? I, I wouldn't say it's a one-way street. It's, I think it's all about respect. Well, but wouldn't you say, just as you would say, why can't you leave the transgender people alone? Mm-hmm. Well, couldn't you say to the transgender people, why don't you leave the girls alone in the locker room? Why don't you leave the girls alone on the Penn swim team? Why don't you leave, why don't you leave them alone? I, I don't know if that's a sound argument, if that makes sense. Um, I don't think those are kind of comparable because you're talking about pinpointing someone's like livelihood, their human right to live however they want to. I don't think people it's comparing have a right to, to live however they want to. Huh. No, I think you have a right. You have an obligation to live, you know, as you should. In mm-hmm. if I if I wanted to be a dolphin, I wouldn't have any right to do it, and I wouldn't have any ability to. But do I it would respect ground. you. I would respect you, and I would hear you, well, you might and I would be there for you if you wanted to identify as a dolphin. You would support Michael the dolphin? If you wanted to, That's yeah. Very, it's very, I think it's misguided of you, but I, it's very generous. Enjoy. Yeah. S- Sierra? Yes. Thank you very much. Mm-hmm. I, I appreciate you. I really appreciate you coming. Of course. Good. Yeah. I appreciate you talking to me. Yeah. Sierra may not have come away completely convinced, but the very fact that she showed up and sat down with someone she'd previously implied was a danger and a menace to society was impressive. She, a student activist, showed a lot more courage and integrity than President Farley, who did nothing more than take fact-free pot shots while hiding in his ivory tower. As my speaking tour rolls on throughout the country, I'm hoping to find more people like Sierra who are willing to cross the picket line, hear what conservatives have to say, and maybe even muster the courage to talk about these topics face-to-face.